hey you you, you think you think you understand some core concepts of software engineering you think you understand what http request does maybe you do maybe you do i'm not i'm not saying you don't but if you do you are in the one percent of developers who truly understand what happens behind every http request it's an it's the title of this article it's intriguing i feel like i understand that but let me see if i'm in the top one percent but at the same time i understand that it's like one of those things will i be able to explain it from scratch i don't think so i don't think so i don't i think i'll be bad, very bad at it so i'm interested in reading this you know reading this learning being in the top one percent it's an article written by code by umar you send them every day but do you really know what's happening between your code the browser and the server let's dig into it and for those of you that don't know me my name is pascal i'm studying masters in computer science and daily read read articles like this in software engineering about productivity about job searching and things like that so if that interests you make sure to like and subscribe introduction every line of code starts a chain reaction every time you call fetch open a web page or trigger an api you are sending an http request it looks so simple fetch and then you enter a https and api example.com posting etc but under the hood this one line activates dozens of subsystems dns lookups tcp handshakes tls encryption routing through global networks server-side parsing database queries compression caching and rendering that's true that is true this this is like a magic magical um what do you call this it's a magic <laughs> you fetch something and it does all this for you and it's magic it works so well most developers stop at the server response with json yes yeah that's where i would stop at but if you understand what happens behind every requ request you unlock the ability to debug network issues design scalable apis and build faster web apps let's unpack this invisible journey step by step because it's happening billions of times every second across the internet i like this kind of things when you break it down into small steps number one the request isn't just a function call it's a conversation the first thing to realize http is not a function call it's a conversation between two computers one asking one answering the conversation looks something like this client hey api.example.com can i have slash posts in json format server sure here you go 200 okay but to reach that sure a lot of needs to happen starting with figuring out where api.example.com even is dns finding the server's real address computers don't understand domain names like example.com they only understand ip addresses like 993.194 and so on and so forth so the first thing your system does is ask what's the ip address for api.example.com this is handled by the domain name systems the phone book of the internet here's the lookup chain browser cache have i seen this before os cache has this domain been resolved recently router or i isp dns server can you find this domain for me root and the tld servers okay here the here is the authoritative source finally it responds to an ip which is stored locally so the next quest next request is faster yep i knew this i knew this because i've taken a networking class recently so i knew this i'm proud i'm kind of proud of myself I, i've actually learned from my courses i've paid attention number three tcp it's establishing a reliable connection now that the browser knows the ip it must create the tcp connection to that server tcp transmission control protocol ensures that the data sent between client and server arrives reliably and in order this happens through the three-way handshake client sin can we talk server cnec yes let's talk client act confirmed let's start yep Ew, this was also in the networking class a channel is now open between the two machines fun fact this handshake happens for every new connection through http2 and http3 now optimizes to reduce latency <clears throat> tls making it secure because we are using https another handshake occurs tls transport layer security this step ensures encryption and authenticity the server sends its ssl certificate to provide prove its identity the client verifies it against the trusted 
certificate authorities, they agree on an encryption key. Now any data exchanged is encrypted. Even if intercepted, it's unreadable. That's what gives you the little lock icon in the address bar. Yeah, for sure. It's making making HTTP from HTTP to HTTPS. This has always been, I don't know, very fiddly for me. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, even if I do the same thing. And I mean, it, of course, it's me. It was making, doing something weird, but yeah. I don't know. I think this is like, I don't understand it too much. I've done it a few times before, but yeah. The real HTTP request, the message you sent. Finally, the actual HTTP request is sent across the wire. Here's what it looks like in raw form. Get post HTTP, host API example.com, accept user agent, authorization, bear, bearer token. Pretty standard. This message has three main parts. Request line, what you want, headers, context about your request, body, optional data. The, yeah, headers will include things like authorization, authorization. Example of a post request. Posts, and we give it a host. Content type, application JSON. And then we give the JSON format, title and author. The server decoding, processing, and responding. When this request reaches the server, it goes through multiple layers. Web server, like Nginx, Apache, or Caddy, handles the raw HTTP request, forward it to your uh, application logic. Number two, application lo server, like Node.js, Django, or Laravel, reads the headers and method, authenticates the user, executes the business logic, query DB, run code, builds a response. Number three, database or external services, fetches or updates data, returns it to the app server. I think this is something that we are kind of used to, no, not really, I was going to say, this is kind of like, well, um, I don't even know what I was going to say, but this is when we have a local database and we do things, you know, fetch data from the database and then we, I don't know, make a table on our website or something. But no, it's, it's, uh, it's different to that. Yeah, let's move on. Finally, the server constructs an HTTP response. But this makes sense though. You receive it, you process it, you fetch, uh, a part of that is fetching the data from the database. Number seven, the response the server talks back. Here's what the response might look like. HTTP 1.1, 200 OK, content type application JSON, cache control, max age equals 3600. 3, and it gives you the response in this format. Again, it has three main parts. Status line indicates success. 200 indicates success. Header 200 OK indicates success. Headers describe metadata. Type caching rules cookies. Body the actual data you requested. The status code tells you the outcome. 200 means 200 to something something is success. 300 something is redirection. 400 is client error. 500 is server error. Number eight the Browser receiving, parsing, and rendering. When the response reaches your browser, it doesn't stop there. If the response is HTML, the browser parses it into a DOM tree, fetches, fetches linked assets, CSS, JS images, um, builds the CSSOM. Okay, I don't, I don't know what that is actually. CSSOM, CSOM style tree, combined DOM, CSSOM render tree, paints pixel to your screen. Okay, okay, that's interesting. I mean, this is quite straightforward mostly, but yeah, there's things like CSOM, I don't, but I guess it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, paints pixel to your screen. If the response is JSON, your JavaScript code processes it. That's how one network request turns into the dynamic UI you interact with. That's cool. That's really cool. And just the whole process, knowing the whole process, it's not too difficult, huh? Yeah, it's something that, yeah, it's it's like magic, but it's not too difficult now that I really dig into it like that. Number nine, caching, the hidden performance booster. Caching ensures the next request for the same data doesn't travel the entire journey again. Types of caching, browser cache, stores static assets locally. CDN cache, stores files at global edge locations. Server cache, saves computed results in memory. Redis, memcached. Response headers control caching, cache control, max age and e tag. Result faster load times, fewer requests, happier users. Number 10, the return trip back to the network, 
back through the network. The response data retraces its path through routers, gateways, and ISPs all the way back to your machine. Then your browser reads the headers, decodes the bytes, and updates the UI. From start to finish, the entire process often completes in under 300 milliseconds. That's faster than a blink. That's crazy. That's crazy how far us humans came from living in a cave to do, to being able to doing being able to doing this. Um, number eleven, debugging this flow. When you understand this flow, debugging stops being a guessing game. Problem DNS error. Where to look up? Domain not resolving. Check DNS records. Timeout. When it times out, yes, TCP TLS handshake issue. When it gets 404.3, auth or token problem, 404, wrong URL or routing, 500, server crash or logic error. I had this today at an exam uh, and I couldn't solve it. Problem, slow load, latency caching or CDN issue. Open DevTools network tab and you will see every step. DNS connection, TLS, waiting, download, a perfect timeline of how long each stage took. That's really cool. This is something that, yeah, I feel like I will learn a lot from looking at things like this. Even this article is really well written. Number 12, why this one requests explains the entire internet. Because every interaction on the web follows this exact pattern, sending an email, SMTP, loading a, it's different protocol, loading a web page, HTTP, fetching data API, watching Netflix, HTTP, or TCP, and streaming. It's all variations of the same theme. A request leaves your machine, travels the network, hits a server, and returns data. Once you truly internalize that, networking concepts stop feeling abstract. They become visual, logical, and intuitive. Conclusion, master the conversation, master the web. Every HTTP request tells a story, a negotiation between machines that makes the digital world possible. If you understand that story, DNS lookup, TCP TLS handshake, headers, status co codes, caching, and rendering, you've gone from simply using the web to truly understanding how it works. So the next time you call fetch or open a website, remember, you're not just Loading data, you are orchestrating one of the most incredible systems humanity ever built. Call to action, which part of an HTTP request was hardest for you to visualize before? Uh, for me, well, what would have been the hardest? DNS, the first step is DNS, no, that's fine. Um, yeah, conversation, I understand that. DNS is fine. TCP establishing a reliable connection, that's fine too. TLS making it secure, that's fine too. I understand the yeah real HTTP because the message you send, mm, the server decoding, processing, and responding. I guess this part is a little bit of a mystery to me because I feel like it's something that I just rely on the server to do. But yeah, I feel like this is really well explained. Yeah, and yeah, I hope this was kind of clear to you too. Even if you knew it already, it's always a good reminder. And thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.